Welcome to our seventh episode in our Stay Peachy webinar series. For those of you who don't know me, I am James from Giant Peach. We are a creative digital agency. We build strategy that drives growth. Uh, we create content that sparks connection and we develop user experience that converts. And it's our mission to create meaningful digital experiences that will inspire change. And we are lucky enough to work with some fantastic businesses from fantastic brands across the UK brands that are doing really great things and really making a difference and we're using our expertise to help make them even more successful because we know that then we're making a difference and we are proving that um, business can be and should be a force for good our stay peachy series is a series of free advice free information uh, to help us all adjust to the new normal and today we have a great story we are joined by rose from alicia catering and alicia catering hey rose <laughs> alicia <laughs> catering, um before all this hit were the uh, event caterer in london now obviously there's not huge amounts of events happening right now um so this is st a story really about i think business a business pivoting um a story about resilience and a story about a business staying true to its mission, a mission of promoting natural food and local producers and a mission of reducing food waste. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hand over to Rose. I'm going to get rid of me on the screen. And if you have any questions, pop them into the chat room or pop your hand up and Meg will be monitoring that and we can ask Rose questions at the end. So I'll hand over to you, Rose. Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, um, James, for that um, introduction. And also, thank you so much for having us. Um, so obviously, as James said, uh, I'm from Alicia Catering. I'm the business developer. Um, and prior to everything happening, Alicia Catering was a catering company, or still is a catering company, that works with artisanal produce, um, producers within the Bermondsey and within the UK area. Um, and we saw surplus ingredients um, from those local artisanal producers. And when I mean surplus, I mean produce that due to overproduction or natural imperfection would otherwise be thrown away. So the produce that we'd work with was still really, really uh, good quality. Um, however, just they, they couldn't use it. And so we would take that produce and in our kitchen, which is in Bermondsey. Um, so if we have any Londoners here around near um, kind of Spa Terminus, which is near Maltby Street Market, um, we would then uh, create canapes. That's what we specialised in. Um, so we did do breakfasts and lunches as well, um, but we specialised in canapé curation. Um, and 75 to 70% 70 of all of our food that we produced was made from surplus. Obviously, we can't we weren't able to, to do everything from surplus, um, even though we really, really tried to. Um, in terms of our kitchen, we adhere to a, a nose to tail, root to stem cooking. So we try and use everything. Um, and finally, we use a cargo bike to get from A to Z. Um, so all of us are quite fit, <laughs> which is great. And it's good for our legs. Um, so yeah, we, so we had a cargo bike, which we were um, give, um, which a Zen Zero Emission Network uh, gave to us, which was really great a couple of years ago. And so we would always get to events using this. Um, so obviously during the kind of change that we've had recently, uh, which we're all aware of, uh, we were looking at ways of how we could change the model uh, because obviously catering um, as a whole is something that you know, we, we're unable to do right now. Um, all of our events were canceled and we really had to either decide to close um, or change or pivot. Um, so we decided to do home deliveries. Um, with the same premise, um, so we work with all of our local producers, all of our local suppliers, um, and we actually sell their products on our website. So we created an e-shop, um, and so we work with people like Little Bread Peddler, um, who create delicious sourdough bread, um, to um, Husk and Honey, uh, where we sell their granola. So it's kind of essential home deliveries. That's how it kind of started off. And slowly over the last couple of weeks, which honestly has felt like months for us, um, it's changed kind of from that um, to we've, we've actually started our own retail product. Because this is something that we've always wanted to do. Uh, we've always wanted to create our own retail pod product. Um, and this kind of gave us that, that push to be able to do that, which was kind of great, but also in a really bad kind of bad circumstance, I guess. Um, but a great time to do that as well. And um, so we've created our own 
uh, retail products that are all made from surplus produce. Um, so we have one of my favorites, which is the Caramel Whey, uh, which is kind of really great. It's uh, the whey. Um, so if you, when you're producing milk um, or sorry, yogurt or cheese, and when you drain it, there's uh, the whey. So it's kind of like a see-through-y liquid that's that remains and we've actually made a caramel whey from that which is so delicious um and it's yeah it's, it's pretty pretty interesting uh we also have fermented veg which i'll talk a little bit about later because it's a really great thing for you guys to do at home um yeah for you guys to do at home if you have any vegetables that are about to go off um and then yeah we've got loads of different other things um i will share with you just so that you can see um exactly what our um Kind of what our website look like what our website looks like um, and also around the home deliveries i just wanted to kind of give you a little overview of this um, and as i said prior, previously uh, we had a bicycle uh, we have a cargo bike quite a large bike um, that we get everywhere from from a to b um, and this is how we do our deliveries um, so yeah the first couple of weeks of this was very exciting but also very challenging because it was really hot so we had three to four to five deliveries that we had to do across London um, and we had to drop them off all on a cargo bike um, which is really great but also quite hard when you're going up up and down hills um, I think I think this is one of the things that I kind of wanted to mention was that I think the cargo bike kind of gave us a kind of good opportunity. Um, we were able to do that, especially within the local area. We were able to use, uh, we were able to transition quite quickly um, onto uh, deliveries. Um, and we also had the Zero Emissions Network help us um, in the first two weeks and offered us a second bike um, completely uh, free of charge for a month. So that was really 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 helpful um, and now we've partnered with people like pedal me if any of you know them um, they actually do quite a lot of our deliveries but we also still do some of ours um, so yeah so this is kind of our website as you can see we partnered with people like Neil's Yard Dairy who are really close to us Little Bread Peddler and within it you can see our own kind of range we've got flour um, and we're constantly trying to add more and more things and and kind of get feedback from that as well which has been quite an exciting time for us. Um, but yeah, changing into that kind of e-commerce um, has been a real challenge. Um, it's not something that we ever obviously did before. We were very much B2B, so we work with businesses rather than um, rather than individuals. Um, so that's been quite a challenge. Um, I think setting up um, a kind of Shopify, that's, that's what we use, a Shopify uh, store, which has got all of the, the products that I just showed you on. Uh, that was a bit of a change as well for us. Um, but we've kind of taken it on. And I think the biggest thing that we've learned is to kind of ask for help. And, um, and we've received so much feedback from people um, and especially from others who uh, are already working in the kind of e-commerce sector. We've, uh, we did quite a lot of phone calls at the beginning asking them to kind of help us um, to kind of set it up, which was really, uh, really great because we got a lot of feedback from them. So that's kind of how we've, uh, we've moved. Um, and the, our own retail uh, kind of product has been quite an exciting one. Um, and yeah, we still work really closely with surplus food um and yeah so that's kind of us at the moment um in terms of what that will look like in the future i feel like james that might be a question that you might want to ask me later on but but in terms of what the kind of catering industry uh, might look like in the future there's something that we've started to uh, started to think about um and the way that we're looking at that right now is uh, at the moment we're creating boxes for independent businesses or businesses um or even family occasions if you want to uh, send a breakfast package or a lunch package uh or a kind of evening snack where we've started to kind of develop boxes um that we're able to drop off around London um, because obviously the catering industry is going to be completely different at the end of this. Um, so, yeah. I'm really interested in that process you went through um, to pivot because you mentioned there that it'd be very easy to pull down the shutters, close the business down because that fear factor comes in, right? You know, this yeah, is massively. a challenging time. The business is going to be completely wiped out. Everything we normally do is now not there. So I'm really interested in that process you went through, you know, individually and as a team to, to, to sort of pivot, to go, no, we're going to get through this and we're going yeah. to change our model. 
Um, how did that look? How did that start? Um, so I guess, I mean, uh, oddly, actually, we were talking about it the other day. It started kind of a week before the, the or two weeks, actually, before the lock, lock-in um, had happened. And uh, obviously, when when kind of COVID-19 started coming about, those questions started arising. Um, and so it kind of started two weeks before any kind of lock-in or anything like or lockdown or anything like that. Um, and we started talking about what we would do if, if catering wasn't an option, um, just because we started slowly having a couple of events cancel. We were like, so what, what, what can we do? What, what do we have? Um, and how can we use the, the equipment that we have? Um, and what I mean by equipment is obviously the cargo bike um, and also the fact that we've got a kitchen, a large kitchen space. And we were like, well, what can we do with this? And also our suppliers. So they're the three things. Um, and uh, we actually started off by think, looking at how we could deliver to people um, the products that we had um, in stock already um, from our suppliers um, and also we were looking at how we could actually deliver and go to supermarkets and pick up goods for people uh, because we knew that loads of people potentially might um, have to stay indoors because we'd seen this in obviously in other countries where they had lock-in so this yeah. was like the, the original kind of conversation that we <laughs> yeah. had and we were like what would this look like um, and um, and then I guess after that, it was actually Sophie, who's who's one of the participants today, uh, who's uh, who owns Alicia Catering. Um, she uh, she thought she kind of sat us all down and said, would we all want to kind of continue this? And do we want to try something new? Do we want to see if home deliveries work? And that kind of was the start of it. Um, it was all of us coming together and kind of saying, yes, uh, we we had no idea how to kind of get to that point but we thought there is no point of stopping this um we don't want to we we don't we also didn't want to um kind of furlough everyone and stop the catering because we wanted to make sure that when we got to when everything starts re reopening we were really ready to kind of go and be the catering company in London. Yeah. We didn't want to stop everything because that wouldn't have been beneficial for us or for the employees or even for our partners that we work with. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of one of the biggest driving forces for us was to how can we make sure that we have everything set and ready so that when the kind of economy and everything resets itself, we're like the driving caterer um, in London. But there's a mindset thing there then because it, you know, it's there's a there's a we're going to get through this. We are going to survive. We're going to be better for it. So there's there's a positive sort of mind frame in terms of um, you know there there will you know we will get back to a sense of yeah. not, so wanting to survive and wanting to be wanting to adapt. Um, and how is it how is it all going? How is it? Yeah, it's going good. I yeah. mean, we're still all cycling around like crazy. It's great. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 a really. Um, I, I feel like we're all learning. We're we're constantly learning. Um, and I think one of the biggest ways that we've learned is to just, as I said previously, is to just like ask for feedback um, because it's a completely different ball game. I think one of the biggest things that we found actually, because at, at the beginning we had loads and loads of deliveries and then we were like, they're kind of, they're, uh, we went through a kind of a little bit of a dip and then we were like, how do we get them back up again? And uh, flyering, oddly, was one of the, the biggest drivers in, uh, in getting our customer base in. So we're constantly trying different things and uh, we're seeing kind of what what works and what doesn't. Um, so yeah, so that, that's been quite a fascinating one, yeah. What's been the surprises? What's um, surprised you during, during this change? Um, I think the flyering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's such a weird one. Because yeah. you think everyone's not indoors. Uh, everyone's indoors, sorry. Um, and no one's outside. But actually quite a lot of the things, we've been putting them like um, on kind of street corners and near shops and things like that. Um, and obviously um, and flyering to people's houses. But that's been one of the surprising ones that I just wasn't really, I didn't think would work, mm. um, that has worked. And another one actually was... Uh, we started calling up all of our old, uh, all of our uh, previous customers. Um, so the customers that had ordered a couple of weeks ago and the feedback that we got from them was just so great that kind of spurs you on, kind yeah. of keeps you going as well, which is really nice. Um, so yeah. yeah. Good stuff. And to get a, um, an e-commerce site set up, what, within a couple of weeks? We did it within, a, yeah, I mean, we did it within like a couple of days, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which was not like fully set up, but we yeah. had 
the the kind of basics on within I feel like around 24 hours uh, yeah. because we we just completely changed our focus we, yeah. we knew that the events were not going to happen and so we just we completely focused on home deliveries and how to make that work mm. um and uh yeah within literally i think the first day of when we found out about lock, lockdown um that week we started getting um, new deliveries in which was great all our first deliveries in which was amazing like it was such a change um and we just kind of made it work and i think slowly we've added new things to our kind of you know the way that we package things uh labeling has been yeah. like some you know things like this that we just had never had never done before um yeah. so it has been a complete shift it's a completely do, new business yeah um so yeah it's been really exciting um and very um eye-opening yeah I, well i think that's it's great though because you know going to an event taking all the catering along to an event you are there you know you knew how to run that you knew exactly how that went you were getting better and better at that yeah when um you've got to take one pick one pack product and then deliver that one product or whatever it is to someone's house how yeah. It's a completely different process, right? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it needs some figuring out. But um, I like the fact that you're now learning about labelling and packaging because people care about that stuff. Yeah. But also from an internal process point of view, you want the packaging labels to be printed off nice and easily to yeah. speed up that process. Exactly. And I think that's it. It's like um, internally we have, you know, like stocking items and inventory and, you know, making sure that we have the right amount of things. Like, you know, we've had orders where it's like the pasta sauce, the surplus pasta sauce that we make. We don't have any left. So we're like, chef, we need some more. So we need to go find some surplus because our deliveries are going out at 12. So it's like it's it's uh, it's been very exciting, but it's also been uh, a lot of ups and downs. So, yeah, it's been good. So what does what does a business look like moving forward then? So I'll, I'll see if anyone's got any questions in a second. But um, so now you've got this home delivery business. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully as the economy starts to open up, events are going to be happening. It's probably not going to happen for, for you know, um, soon. But um, are you going to have both of these different sort of models? Do you think you'll run them both or will you go back completely to catering? How does it look? How do you think? Yeah, I think potentially, I think the home deliveries have been um, a great success for us at the beginning and that they still are. I think what we've taken out of the home deliveries is definitely the retail products that we created. So I think there's definitely a retail side of it, whether that is home deliveries or, you know, selling on Saturdays at Maltby street market or whatever that looks like. I think there's two different sides. I think catering is still our driving force and it's still what we do. Um, and it's still what we want to be able to do at the end. Um, However, I do think it's opened up that opportunity to have another side business, which is so exciting for us. Yeah. Um, so whether it is home deliveries or whether it's just kind of like a shop and retail products or a kind of a, a, a pick up and drop off point in our warehouse, we're still a bit unsure about that. But I, it definitely will change the way that we, the way that the business is run, which is exciting because I think it will, it will be two different types of things under one umbrella. Yeah, I still have one more. Yeah, um, good, good, good. <laughs> I can also give you some tips as well. Okay, okay. Let's, go, let's go in with the yeah. tips. Yeah, okay, go. so obviously, as you know, we uh, work with surplus uh, produce and one of our missions is to try and reduce food waste. Um, so we have, if you also go on our blog, we've got loads and loads of tips on how to reduce food waste at home and also how to make fermented veg and other stuff um, from food that would go off. Uh, but this is probably one of my favorite tips. Um, so what you need... I'm not gonna, probably take all of this out so if you one of the biggest things that i have found um forever is that whenever i buy herbs or salads within a couple of days they go off um which is so frustrating um so what you need is a tupperware box any tupperware box it can be uh from a takeaway or anything don't if you if you have some at home don't bother buying a new one so we've got a tupperware box uh also some kind of blue roll like this um, and then your herbs. So any herbs that you've got. So I've got a bunch of herbs here as well. Um, and what you do is you wet this. Don't make sure it's not too wet, but it's, it's kind of a little bit wet. Um, but it's not soaking basically. And then pop it in the Tupperware box like this, create like a little bed and then, um, put all your herbs in there and you can have anything in there. I think at the moment I've got like oregano, sage, thyme, and you just like mix them all together and then you wrap them up like so and then pop the lid back on and this should um, increase the shelf life from what two to three days to about three weeks 
yeah, it's it's uh, it's completely changed the way that I mean, this is what we do at work, but in terms of like at home, it's great. So I've got in here oregano, rosemary, and sage, um, and it's also another tip is just to to make sure to label everything um, because then you know exactly what you've got in your fridge. Um, and so yeah, so that's that's one of my tips. The other one is a fermented veg which I've made here. Um, it doesn't look great, but it will taste delicious. If you have any vegetables um, that are going to go off, um, literally chop them up. Um, get uh, a liter of water and then two tablespoons of salt. Um, get some garlic or any kind of herbs and basically mix them all together and then put them in a sealed container for two to three days outside to make sure they're not in the fridge. And then after that, you can pop them in the fridge. This is about to go in the fridge. I don't know whether you can see, but it's kind of, bur oh, you can't really see, but it's, it's basically, um, it's, it's kind of bursting up a little bit. So when I open it, it'll make a little pop sound because it's, it's fermenting. So yeah, so there you go. <laughs> nice, good tips. Thank you. Um, there is a question here yes. uh, in the Q&A. Uh, have you been exchanging any ideas or innovation with any other catering businesses? Um, or is there any ideas or innovations that you have that you have not introduced yet, which you will do in the near future? Um, so for the first question, yes. So when we, the first kind of week um, of the lockdown, we actually contacted a lot of catering businesses that we knew of, um, some in North London, some in East um, and some in West. Because when we first started the home deliveries, we really wanted to make sure that we were supporting um, lots of small independent businesses, especially catering businesses. And so we contacted them and asked them um, if they would like us share um, any any new new stories or any any of their new projects that they were doing, um, and also to see if there were any synergies in terms of if we couldn't do the home deliveries, um, if they could in their area. Uh, because obviously for us at the beginning the home deliveries were quite hard to kind of like if we went all the way to west london and we only had one delivery there i mean that's quite a long long way i, I did a couple and and i was very tired <laughs> um so we tried to work with different catering companies um to see if they could take some of our clients and vice versa um and so we yeah we're constantly trying to kind of promote them and and, and support them as well good good answer a uh, good question. If there's any other questions in terms of like surplus food or what to do with food at home, I know this isn't it, but I'm more than happy to answer them as well. Yeah, I think I think surplus food. I mean, the, what retail is doing pretty good. Well, was doing a pretty good job about food waste, but it's us in the home where we do tend to waste quite a lot, don't we? So yeah, I think yeah. where you can help us with that would be great. Well, to be honest with you, like on our blog, we've got loads and loads of tips. I think one of them is like even how to like keep your fruit and veg when you get them from the supermarket, how to ensure their shelf life is longer. So tips like that are really good to read, um, which are all, yeah, all found online, which is great. Just the last question that I've got, you know, you mentioned you've created a retail product. It was always something you guys were thinking about, but you know we've been, you've been forced into this do you think you know that that change that creating that product has just been accelerated or the process has been accelerated because of coronavirus are there you know yeah definitely i think it definitely made us kind of it gave us the time yeah um it gave us the time to actually be able to to do that um and also because we were constantly trying to see what we could add to the platform what we what was missing that we knew that we could do uh, it gave us that opportunity to actually explore different avenues like the caramel way, which we just wouldn't have done. That was, that was never the retail product we had in mind. Actually, the retail product we had in mind was cheesy, like cheesy, like um, kind of cheesy shortbreads um, that you could have like at home. That was it. <laughs> that we could make from leftover cheese. And actually probably our biggest selling and our, yeah, our biggest selling product at the moment is the caramel way. Um, and it's just so, it's so delicious. And so I think, yeah, it gave us the time to really be able to explore um, what we could do with surplus on a retail level rather than a catering level. Um, so that's been kind of really interesting because we've got now a, a huge retail range and we're constantly adding to it. So we've got our ready meals as well that we're constantly add adding. And the ready meals will always change because it depends on what we have in surplus. So we're not going to have tagine for... For, for a year, let's say, we'll have tagine for a week until it's sold out and then what we get in surplus, we'll make something else of. So yeah. it's ever changing, it's ever evolving. And I think that's the kind of exciting thing about it as well. Good stuff. Well, yeah. um, thank you, Rose, for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye, bye. bye. bye.